Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take you through a demonstration of the Radan sheet metal solution. You can see on the screen now, this is the main landing page when you first start up the software. You have options to open up 2D drawings, 3D drawings, part modeling, or go straight into nesting. <clears throat> At this point, first step we're going to take today is we're going to create a new nest project. Okay, give it a name, okay, and accept that. See a couple of different things take place on the screen. The center window here, this is my main working window where I'll be working on nests or parts. Down at the bottom here, these are the parts as they're getting queued up to be nested. And then over here on the right-hand side, you'll see the nesting area. Once the nests have been created, you'll see the nest images there as a thumbnail sketch and a bit of a progress update as to the status of each nest. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and, and grab some geometry. So I can bring in 2D DXF files. I can bring in 3D part files, assemblies, either as a intermediate file format, SAT, STEP, or IGES, or I do have the ability to import native uh, SOLIDWORKS, Inventor, Creo, or um, using the optional direct translator. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and open up an assembly here. This probably consists of eight or ten components. And while we're working in 3D, I'm just going to go ahead and suppress these side windows. Now, I can rotate this assembly around and zoom in, zoom out, turn bits and pieces of it on or off accordingly. Okay. Um, with this assembly up on the screen, I do have the ability to break this down and nest these components. Before I do that, I'm going to verify that I can, in fact, manufacture this components and I'm going to do that by running these parts through our press break software so depending on who designed this assembly maybe it was one of my customers that are not familiar with what I have for press break tooling maybe it was our engineering department um, whatever the case may be this is a great way to check to make sure the parts can be manufactured with the press breaks and tooling I have in-house or to get the information ahead of time to find out if I need to buy tools in order to manufacture this assembly. So to do that, I just simply click on the rad bend icon. I can click around to the different components on this assembly, find the part I want to take through the press break software, hit apply, and it passes it through to the press break dashboard. Okay. So as it's passing it through, it's doing a couple of things for me at this point. It's actually unfolding the component and working out the bend sequence. Okay, So when we see the part appear on the screen, it's, it's isolated, that one component. It's identified the bend lines with different colors to represent up or down bends. And it's also sequenced out the bends for me. Okay, I can rotate this around to any angle. Okay. I can step through bend by bend what it's looking like. Okay. And additionally, I can take a look at the flat pattern. If I pull this window down, you can see there's an image of the flat pattern with the bend lines numbered as well. Gives me a couple of overall dimensions of this component. The next step in the process, of, effectively, I'm just going to work my way from left to right. First thing I would do is select the press break I want to bend this on. See, we have a variety of demonstrational press breaks. I'm going to go ahead and select my demonstrational machine, the hexagon press break. Okay. Then from here, it's already worked out the sequence, but I'm going to go ahead and, and hit the automatic button, <clears throat> in which case it's going to go through, automatically select the tools for each of the bends, as well as determine the finger stop locations for each of the bends. Okay. When it's done, It'll come back to me with an image of the tools and finger stops that we can take a look at. Now, any of these steps that are done automatically, I do have the ability to override manually, make changes to the tooling, make changes to the bend sequence, as well as the finger stop or back gauge locations. Okay? So 
it's gone through and, and created those for me over on the right hand side of the screen here you can see a 2d profile of the tool set that's highlighted okay it actually came up with four unique tool sets in order to bend this part if I hover my cursor over them it shows me the tool numbers in this case I'm using real style tools okay um, you can rotate this image around step through bend by bend as we did earlier or I can take this into a full simulation okay by clicking on the simulation it now introduces a full working 3d model of my press brake okay rotate this around to other orientations get a good vantage point of how I want to watch this job being formed on my press brake continue by hitting the play button on it and it goes through bend by bend showing me some animation of how the part needs to be flipped and rotated between bends but more importantly as it goes through the simulation it's checking for collisions does the part collide with the press brake the back gauge or the tooling if there is a collision it will change the affected areas red and give me an error message as to what took place maybe the part collides with the tooling maybe it collides with the back gauge or based on the way it's designed maybe it collides with itself the part physically can't be bent the way it's designed uh, at any case it's very valuable information to find this out before the parts are cut and brought over to the press break where I can react earlier in the process if changes need to be made. Slides down to the next tool set. <clears throat> now we're on bend number seven. <clears throat> Just a couple bends left. Once it's done going through the sequence, if I don't have any collisions, at this stage I can go ahead and have it generate the program for me by hitting the compile button, as well as have it produce a detailed setup sheet with graphics. Now, depending on your press brake and your controller's capabilities, um, we can import, or excuse me, include the graphics, the 3D model, in the programs if the machine is capable. <clears throat> Otherwise, we can have it included in the setup sheet. Now, this is a, uh, basically a PDF report that gets summarized. It's taking multiple images per bend, an image of the flat pattern, tooling setup information and putting it into a nice report. I can print this report out and send it out to the shop floor with a traveler or I could have it available electronically as a PDF file. You can view it on a terminal or a mobile device, whatever the case may be. All right, so when a report pops up here, you can see the initial first page it shows who programmed the part, when it was programmed, got your tooling summary information, what tool sections are required, how many links or what the total length is per tool set, where they're loaded into the machine. Okay, We jump to the next page, you see an image of both the isometric and the flat pattern showing you the overall dimensions, the overall X and Y dimensions for this part. And then moving on to the third and subsequent pages, you can see multiple images per bend. These are user definable. The orientations that you save these images off in is something the user has control over, but a great visualization tool for the operator at the press break, how they need to load this part into the machine. And it also includes some information as far as when to flip and rotate these parts. Okay. So from here, I can jump back to my 3D model. I can continue bending additional components and working my way through this assembly and confirming that all these parts can be bent and manufactured as designed. Or alternatively, I can tell the software to go ahead, break down this assembly, and we'll start nesting. So I'm just going to turn my side windows back on and my parts window back on. 
tell it to break down this assembly for me. Okay. So the first thing it does is it takes a look at this assembly and it says, hey, uh, some of these parts may not be sheet metal. So it's isolated those out of this unfolding process and gave me a list of all these components. Okay. If I click on one of the parts, you can see a thumbnail sketch of what that component looks like. Control through that list of parts, or I can select them all, and at this point, maybe I want to apply a multiplier to it. Customers ordered 22 or 50 of these assemblies, whatever the case may be. Hit the multiplier, and it adjusts the part quantities accordingly. I've got some controls at this point if I wanted to identify parts that are suitable for common line cutting. Um, I can change material type or thickness if necessary, as well as control the orientation of an individual part or the entire group of components. Once I'm satisfied with all my settings, I simply tell it to go ahead and break down this assembly, unfold the components ready for nesting. Okay. All right, so we've added nine parts to our nest project. Go ahead and accept that, and you can see the parts list down below. Okay, over on the side again, and this is where the nests are going to appear once we start nesting. I've got some sheets available for nesting. This is a running library of, of what's available in my shop. Okay, I've got some different size blanks available with the different material types and thicknesses. The software is, is capable of, of picking the best blank size. Um, based on the parts that I need to nest, as well as sorting by material type and thickness. Okay, So from here, last step in the process is to tell it to go ahead and run the nester. Okay, So it recalls the components, again, sorts by material type and thickness, figures out the best way to lay them out on the sheet, and then goes through, adds the cutting information, the lead-ins, the lead-outs, optimizes the cutting path, and puts the programs together. So when you see these nests appear in this right-hand window or window pane there um, with the green light next to it, that indicates that these are finished programs ready to go to the laser. They're stored on the network. The laser operator can grab these programs and, and run them on the machine. Okay. You'll see a couple of things going on in my parts window as these nests are being generated. See the plus sign next to a component. That means that these parts have, have been started nesting. Okay? Once they're complete, you'll see a green check mark next to the component indicating we've fulfilled the requirements for that particular component. All right, we've completed the nesting process. We've generated four nests. All 242 parts have been cut that we requested, and we've got 40 minutes and 27 seconds of cutting. If I say OK to that, it recalls the last nest. Okay, It's done a great job nesting this, but we've, we've run out of components. Okay, um, So what we can do is just real quickly, I wanted to show you the uh, profiling information. If I click on profiling, we can see that the lead-ins and lead-outs have been added to the different features. Okay, It's also put in scrap cuts for me. Okay, So once the parts have been cut out on the sheet, or, or possibly even the first step in the process, it will put these scrap cuts in. So when the parts have been removed from the skeleton, it makes it easier to pull this off and get rid of this, the skeleton. Okay, Now, <clears throat> with this, particular nest. Uh, again, it's done a very good job of nesting these components, but it's fulfilled all the requirements. There's a little bit of material left over, so I've got some options on how I can address that. First thing I could do is maybe grab a part that I've already nested, just drag it up into my window on my cursor. Uh, you can see that it's maintaining the spacings that I've predefined. If I hit the page up and page down keys, I can rotate this part around at 45 degree increments and find a position I want to drop this in and just simply point and click to drop that down. Okay. Alternatively, maybe I've got some additional components that have just um, come in or, or been ordered by my customers. So I can go to a parts list of either existing Radant part files or maybe some new incoming 
2D or 3D files. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and, and grab some DXF files, bring those in to my Nest project, just as we did with the same window from 3D. You've got the same controls of part quantities and um, nesting orientations and controls of these components. All right, so we've identified a series of different components. I can set the quantities for each of these parts. Maybe this particular component, we need 25 of them. And if there's room, I'll take 10 extra. And with the quantity extra or filler part, it's not going to start another sheet to fulfill those requirements. It'll just pack in additional components where there's material available. Okay. We'll just go with one of each of these components. Go ahead and, and select all the parts, import them all, and add them right to my Nest project. So we added 11 more parts to my nest project. You can see in the parts window below that none of these parts have been started nesting. Okay. At this stage, I can delete one or any of these nests. Or if I'm satisfied with the way this, lay, this has been laid out, maybe I've spent some time moving parts around and lining them up to a certain way, I have the option at this point to tell the software to go ahead and fill the sheet. Keep the nest the way it is. Take a look at the new parts that I've added to my nest project. See if there's any additional components that can be added into this nest. Go ahead and, and bring those in. Okay. Additionally, if I want to add some more of these components to the nest, I can use the same concept to tell it to go ahead and, and fill the sheet with these components. And just keep trying to come up with ways to nest additional parts on this sheet. Okay. So that's uh, it's done a pretty good job of nesting these out for me. Um, you'll notice over here on the right-hand side that we've got an exclamation point next to this last nest, meaning that um, my cutting data is now out of date. We added a bunch of new parts to this. So the last thing I need to do at this stage is to tell the software to go ahead, update my cutting information, save the program for me on the network. So based on those changes I made, it updates the, the cutting information, optimizes the laser path, saves it away on the network ready to be cut on the machine. So once we go ahead and, and save that nest, now you can see that we've got the green light next to that last program. It's ready to be cut on the machine. Okay. Last thing I'll show you today is the nest reports. Okay. So we have a, a series of different both standard NEST reports available as well as uh, the ability to customize these reports for you or um, allow the users to do it for themselves. So, Okay, let's take a look at a few different options for reporting coming out of NEST projects. Uh, the first one we'll take a look at here is a NEST project report goes through kind of a material summary, how many sheets were used, what size blanks. Um, up at the top, you've got the number of nests generated, the total number of parts, and then a breakdown by component of what was produced in this nest. Okay. As we troll down through this list, get to an image of the first nest, showing you what the nest looks like, and then the individual components inside that nest and it continues to break down the rest of the nests in that project. Okay. Alternatively, we can take a look at a nest overview, which is just a little different view of that particular project, okay. as well as a part overview. Shows a thumbnail of each part, some basic information, in this case the weight of the component, the volume or size of that particular part. Um, all of these reports are customizable, so if there's information that you need to see or 
information that you would potentially pass from your MRP or ERP system, that information can be sent through these reports as well. So last thing I'll touch on as far as the reporting is concerned, we can run through just a quick look at the quick estimates. save that have it generate a quick estimate for me so this is just a, a real basic breakdown of the cost per sheet to produce these components if we just click on the details it's taking into consideration the machine setup time machine run time labor costs um, material costs as well as machine um, load on load times as well And that does it per sheet. You can also do this per part. That information can be added to a nest report as well. Let's take a quick tour of our quoting software red quote. First thing we're going to do is start out by selecting a customer. In this case, we're going to send the quote to Radan US. Okay, from here, we can start to build our quotation by adding some files to this part files. And we can select from DXF files, Radan part files, drawings or nests, as well as nest projects. Okay, I'm going to grab the nest project that we were working with earlier and drag that into my nest project. Excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and close down my part window and take a look at these parts we imported. So we have the parts that were a part of the initial assembly as well as the individual components that we brought in as a DXF file. I can create an assembly within RadQuote, add those components to the assembly where I can assign additional costs for welding, painting, assembly, all of that good stuff. So I'll just go ahead and, and drag and drop those into my assembly. Now the parts are listed underneath that. I can come over here and tell it I want to add some additional cost to this. Maybe we have assembly time as well as painting time. Okay. Go ahead and accept that. It will ask me a series of questions. In regards to the assembly, would this be considered an easy, medium, or difficult assembly to put together? Excuse me, that's for the paint. The mask quality for this, maybe we'll give it a three, and we have the option to add additional colors to it. Um, the actual assembly time to put this together, the 1.5, um, actually that's in minutes, so we'll go with the uh, 45 minutes to assemble this. Go ahead and accept that. From here, I can tell it to calculate the overall cost of this assembly. OK, now the calculations have been made. The cost for this Nest project is 48.7116. That's broken down into these individual components as well as the assembly cost for that assembly that we had added into our NEST project. Last step in the process is to go ahead and take a look at some report options or quote options. This information can be displayed as a quotation that you could send directly to your customer. Alternatively, you can have it set up as a cost breakdown report. Showing you the cost per components, the assembly costs, and giving you the total. Quoting software also includes some light duty CRM functions, tracking quotes, the performance of quotes, things of that nature. 
as well as the ability to integrate this with other MRP or ERP systems such as work plan from Radan. 